So I'm here in New York's Chinatown with my good friend Grace Young. And Grace, you've taken me some pretty special places before, but I think today might take the top. So where are we headed? We're at Grantian Imports. Uh, this is one of my favorite businesses in Chinatown. It's the kind of shop that normally you would find in Hong Kong or China or Asia, specializing in tea. And I've made arrangements for us to have a special tea tasting with Alice Liu. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna be like a kid in a candy store in there. Should we go in? Yep. Awesome. So I am so excited. I'm here at Grand Tea and Imports on Grand Street in New York's Chinatown, and I'm joined by Grace Young and Alice Liu. Um, and Alice is gonna take us through an incredible tea tasting. We're gonna taste uh, three unique Pu'er teas, some ranging up to over 20 years old. Mm. We're gonna learn a ton about it and see the brewing process. I could not be more excited. So we're gonna start off with Tangerine Pu'er, which is this one over here. It's Pu'er fermented tea that is aged inside a husk of a mini tangerine. And the mini tangerine is from the county that's right next door to my family's home village, home county. Um, it's from Xinghui. It's actually where Grace's family is from. They're really well known for its super aromatic tangerines. Um, I like remember my mom telling me that back when she was a kid, when you buy the tangerines, they wouldn't give you the whole tangerine that you bought. You're only paying for the flesh, so they'll peel the tangerine for you and give you your meat in a bag, but then they'll keep the tangerine peels so that they can dry it and like resell that as like either an herb or now it's being packed into this tangerine pour. So there are so many aromatic oils in the outside of a peel, but so many people just ch -ch 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 and mm -hmm. toss it. Mm -hmm. I love that it's getting this new life. And do you know how long this is aged? This uh, particular variety? This aged particular for? one, it's not as old. Um, I couldn't tell you the exact age of it, but it's definitely less than 10 years old. Which is young in this world. <laughs> young, young in this world. In the poor world. Yes. Yep. yes, yes. This is how it looks. Wow, that is so got the, amazing. Got the little top still on there. They give you the whole thing. And then inside is just tea leaves. So I don't understand how they pull the fruit out without breaking the shell. This is like a Chinese magic act, right? Back in the day, they used to scoop it out. But like now, they cut off the top and then they put a kind of like straw um, on the tangerine and blow a big gust of air into it. And the air, it goes between the skin and the meat. So like in the pith and it loosens the pith, yep. or it loosens the meat. And then that way it makes it easier to pick everything out afterwards. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say that like people go in with straws and just like, <laughs> suck out. And I was like, I would sign up for that job like in a heartbeat. A lot of tangerine you'll be eating. Yeah. 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 It's so, it's so complex. Like you get that tangerine, but you also get the earthier tea underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, when you first start brewing it, just because the tangerine peel is on the outside, you'll taste that first. First. But then if you let it steep for longer, then the flavors of the po the poor tea that's inside will start infusing a little bit more and that becomes more of a front note flavor. And that's one of the big benefits of brewing like, you know, some people might be able to see like, that's a really small teapot, can, you know, you're serving three people, but that's kind of yeah. the benefit, right? You do these different sessions and you actually get to like taste it as it evolves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like in Western cultures, you brew it just for that instant, that one time to have all the flavors release all at once so that you'll get a very concentrated brew. And that's why like, tea bags is very convenient for mm -hmm. that. Um, it's just meant for one serving. In China, people, like to make time for tea. It's kind of more of a lifestyle. So people uh, uh, sit down, they bring snacks, they, they, they take time from their afternoon to convene to kind of brew tea. And so throughout, you're, you're brewing a tea throughout your entire tea session of hanging out with people. You, you really get to get little snapshots of the flavor of the tea from beginning to end, different snapshots. Um, and how it evolves. Um, it's so beautiful. Yeah. It's almost like conversation evolves during mm -hmm. that time and like mm -hmm. the tea evolves at the mm -hmm. same time. There's like yeah. this movement to it. Mm. This tea is fabulous. Yeah. So that tangerine puer was unbelievable. Mm. And I feel like that's a good lead in for what we're gonna taste next. Mm. What are we gonna do? So we're gonna do fermented puer, and that's actually the puer that's in the tangerine. This one is called Old Comrade. Um, 
tea cake. And what's super cool about this one is it's from 2004. It's created by a artisan who is, goes by the name of Zhou Bingliang. His signature is actually here. Um, and Zhou Bingliang is super well-known and super cool because he is what many call the father of fermented pu'er. Oh, wow. And so this is, this is a 17-year-old tea that we're going to taste. Is uh, that right? Yes, 17 years oh, old. Wow, that's 2004 amazing. 2004 till now. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So while you're brewing this, can you talk a little bit about the difference between a fermented pu'er, which you have here, mm. and uh, the raw pu'er? Because they're, uh, they're pretty different styles. You know, when we think about pu'er, we usually think about f fermented pu'er. But raw pu'er is the original pu'er. Um, oh, okay. Raw pu'er is picked, dried, nothing much is done to it. It's considered a white tea. It's very minimal manipulation to the leaves. Mm -hmm. um, pu'er fermented tea, as we know it, would take this raw pu'er, moisten it a little bit um, to get it to start growing some bacteria. Then they put it in a shady kind of room that's also a little moist. Um, and let it ferment for three months, at least three months. And then from that process, it takes the tea from a white tea um, to what is considered a ho fa xiao. So it's considered a fermented white tea afterwards. Okay. And it really changes the flavor from being very much a kind of woodsy, smoky flavor to more of like an earthy, minerally, more deep noted flavor. So this is a much much darker brew than the mm. the tangerine. Mm. It's got kind of a coppery mm. amber color. It's really beautiful. Mm. Even the aroma is earthier, right? Much earthier, yeah. Mm. And the thing with pu'er is that the older it gets, the deeper this flavor is supposed to become, and the longer the aftertaste is supposed to be. And that creates like a very like sweet, bittersweet kind of feeling on your tongue, mm -hmm. and we call that hui gan. Um, I can't really translate it into English, but I, I but loosely call it aftertaste. That aftertaste, yeah. I definitely get a, a pretty long one on this. But what's so interesting about this tea is it's, um, I get so much minerality from it, which I don't feel like I really get or I ever thought about a lot in tea. So it's a minerality, there's a little bit of bitterness. Even with poor teas, even though I think like the general taste for fermented tea is um, earthy, but even within that flavor profile, there's a lot of range, meaning like there are ones that can taste like sweet, kind of like prunella or licorice anise. Whereas like there are, there are people who say there are poor fermented teas that taste like mushroom soup. Yeah, oh, wow. And creamy, savory, salty. Like very savory mm -hmm. and a lot of that. Wow, that's really cool. And so the pu'er is very, very good for your digestion. Mm -hmm. So traditionally in Chinese culture, whenever you have dim sum, my family always ordered uh, pu'er. Mm -hmm. So we you're, never you're having a bunch of rich, uh, rich bites and it helps kind of balance that out a little bit. Exactly. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. And Alice, I didn't know this until Alice told me that you shouldn't drink pu'er on an empty stomach mm -hmm. first thing in the morning because it will increase your appetite. Yeah. Well, that's great. Then you get to eat more food. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, but um, there is the um, there's this concept called tea drunk, mm -hmm. which is when you get drunk off of tea, and that ha that could happen with all teas, but it happens more easily with poor tea. And so, if you do it on an empty stomach, you'll start getting this tea drunk feeling, which is when you start feeling nauseous or like your your heart rate starts like. Like, really increasing and okay so I, I i was like let's get tea drunk until you explain what you meant <laughs> and i maybe we should yeah sip slowly i mean the best poets in uh chinese history made their poetry after getting tea drunk really there are a lot of there's a lot of poetry on uh tea drinking and and these people they get these famous poets they tend to get their best inspiration from being tea drunk being tea drunk well as the first two were absolutely incredible i think mm. we're moving on to our third tea and am i right to assume that this is actually your favorite one yes. you save the best for last uh yeah oh it didn't it turned out that way it turned out it that was way not purposeful but yeah we're gonna brew the raw pour now 
you can see how fermenting the leaves turn it into like a brown color whereas on its own it's very much more of a grayish black color mm. and so the rapport would is similar to or is essentially a, a white tea mm. that has aged a long time mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and then so how old is this tea that we're going to taste mm. So I can't tell you the exact age of this one, but I know that this tea is older than me. Um, Old, and older than you? Yes. We can't put an exact date on this because this is poor tea from my dad's reserve. And this tea itself comes from when my dad hosted a tea convention in 2008, 2009. He invited all these tea masters that we studied from and kind of lived with when I was in... Um, China studying tea ceremony. He invited them over to America to kind of do like an exchange. And this tea was special because it wasn't even in the markets. It's poor tea that is harvested, made, and then given to or set aside for diplomatic purposes. Um, wow. It's tea that, you know, ambassadors would gift people. Um, and so after the convention, there was some tea left over and my dad decided to buy it all off of him. So yeah, that's this tea over here. I, and that's also why I can't tell you how old it is. So, so I mean, I'm so honored that we get to taste this. It sounds absolutely incredible, but you, you could say like, it's, it's definitely over 30 years old. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. Very different. Mm -hmm. Very, very different from a, the fermented. Wow, it's really delicate. There's honestly a something kind of citrusy about this too. Like there's almost like a. But hints of cedar, maybe. A a definitely bit. cedar. Yeah. Right. It's interesting because it, it comes on lighter and a little bit more, uh, considerably more delicate than the um, fermented, but it has that really long finish that you were talking about. Yeah. Like, you, I'm still tasting it mm -hmm. after after that sip. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. You, you just let it sit, you sit with that for a little bit. Yeah. Let your mouth taste it. That's also a very good way of qualifying different pours. Like, the longer the aftertaste is. The better this tea is. Yeah, it's got yeah. A, it's got enough to hold up in that kind of like body and flavor to, mm -hmm. to linger mm -hmm. with you. Yeah, people say that younger people tend to like this one or like raws better because there's more front of the mouth flavor, mm -hmm. whereas like with fermented pu'er, there's more kind of like nuanced back of the mouth flavor. That makes and sense. And so yeah. like if you are young and your palate is not as developed yet, it takes a little takes some more aged palate to be able to taste the differences between the small nuances between a poor ripe mm -hmm. whereas like this one is enjoyable yep um even for the newest of tea enthusiasts yeah i think that's a really good point i remember the first time i tried a fermented poor i was like it was just overwhelming to me like i just was like i don't know what this is it tastes like no other tea i had had and it's taken some time for me to like to grow to appreciate them ah oh, this is Fabulous, this tea is so good. I mean, they're all incredible. Alice, thank you so much for this tea ceremony tasting. I can't believe we got to taste these really three totally unique and interesting pu'eres. I learned a ton about them. Mm. Grace, thank you so much. Your perspective on it was fabulous as always. Um, so I definitely want to get some of these um, pu'eres and I'm sure a lot of other people do as well. If they want to, they can go to your website to get them. Yes, that's grantyimports.com. Grantyimports.com, mm -hmm. awesome. And you have all the teas and, and some pieces of select uh, teaware as well. Yes, always adding more into the website. It's a little, it's a small website for now, but it's growing. That's great. And if you're in New York, obviously you got to come to Grantee and Imports right here on Grand Street. Uh, the shop is incredible and there's so much more than just tea. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Well, thank you so much and look forward to drinking a lot more tea with you. Yeah. Thank you both.